Welcome back. You're watching Trade of the Week with me, Zinati Kuma, and join me to unpack her Anglo-American platinum, Apple, and Bitcoin is a founder of Herenia Capital, Beatri Riedlingais. Thank you so much for your time and, uh, yeah, for the privilege of giving us the technical analysis uh, on these today. No problem. Yeah. Interesting that you are going long on well, Anglo-American Anglo Anglo Platinum. Platinum. Yes, so yeah. we've seen that the gold stocks have kind of lifted for themselves out of the grave for the most part. Yeah. Um, and the Platinum stocks has somewhat been lagging. Now, generally, these are all uh, part of the same group. PGMs, actually, mm -hmm. you know, Platinum Group Metals includes gold. So yes. Platinum, gold, radium, and... Uh, ah. uh, rhodium and... Uh, radium. rhodium, palladium. Palladium, sorry, yes. Yes. Um, so those are the four PGMs, right? Mm -hmm. So you, one would imagine that, given the context of um, what other precious metals are doing, yes. that platinum would catch a bit as well. And they haven't really, the platinum stocks have been under quite a bit yeah. of pressure. So this has had a number of us kind of scratching our heads. Mm. So if we look at the Anglo-American platinum chart, this is kind of the first one that in recent times has now again broken above the 200-day moving average. And it seems to be mm. attempting a bit of a trend change here. Mm. So we can't yet say that it's a long-term trend change. We first need to see it go on to make a, a higher yeah. high. I don't know if we could maybe just pull up the chart here for a sec. Yeah. Um, so this high over here is where we sort of really need to get above. If we can get above, uh, I'll put a little marker in here. Is this the trend that we're seeing across uh, the, the PGM space? Because the other day I saw Sibania still water was up about 12%. Yeah, Sibania was also up quite a bit. So let's quickly have a look at Sibania. Um, yeah. Because that was that was quite interesting, and um, would Sibanyu also maybe be considered? Because it was it was up by more than what the others were up. Is it just considered like extremely cheap? Uh, it was on a bit of a news event. I think that uh, mm. that, that rallied on on the back of a bit of news. So you can see there was just a really ah. sort of big gap that that took place there. Yes. Um, we'll just bring that into context a little bit. So that was the eleven percent move, right? Mm. So, but if you look, if you compare trends here. Um, you're really looking at very similar pictures, Sabania versus Anglo-American mm. Platinum, which is this one. So I think what we're seeing here is we're seeing Anglo-American Platinum break above the, you know, it's had this relationship with the 200-day moving average for some time. Keep in mind, it does sometimes break above and the trend continues lower, right? So that risk mm. is obviously still present. Uh, however, we are again leading into a, uh, well, firstly, there's a 200-day moving average crossover. Um, well, price crossing over the moving average. Mm. Uh, and then we see this shorter term moving average also sort of lifting its head. Um, mm. The shorter term moving average is a 20 day moving average. So we might see that sort of give that same crossover situation happening there. And that could be then a confirmation of a further long. What we're really looking for here is a higher high. If we can get above a thousand rand a share, uh, then I think we have a higher high and a longer term trend yeah. change, right? Uh, for now, though, this is a bit of an early entry for the more risky traders. You'd, so you'd probably put your stop loss. Uh, I can draw in our little trade here. Mm -hmm. So if we were to enter here, we'd probably put our stop loss kind of below, eh, sort of around there. Mm. Uh, and you can have a stop your target price up there. So that's your initial entry here. So this is not the greatest. It's a, at least a two to one uh, risk reward ratio. However, if we do break above a thousand, uh, a little bit of a pullback could probably see you add to this trade. And this is the type of trade that if we do have a trend change situation here, mm. we could be in for a very, very long time. Yeah. Uh, because as we can see, if we look at a weekly chart, uh, you know, once it trends in a direction, it really tends to go for quite a while. Uh, so if we can catch sort of this turning point here, we might be able to ride it all the way up to a previous high of around 1,800. And yeah. of course, that'll take many, 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 many months. Um, you guys have been looking for a bottom. But we've been looking for <laughs> a bottom, yeah. It's been, we've been fishing, man. Yeah. And, uh, you know, every now and then we've, we've tried to pick one and it's, we've got enough fingers <laughs> burnt. And that's the nature of trading. You, you win yeah. uh, about 50% of the time. As long as you, you know, cap the risks, then okay. you should be fine. Yeah. yeah. I do also note that a lot of uh, analysts have been picking Anglo-American Platinum mm. as their picks, uh, seeming that it is one of the kind of PGM counters that are seen as good quality. Yes. Yeah. Uh, another good quality company, Apple. Not such good news. But why are you, sh why are you shorting it? Well, all right. I'm going to draw a little chart. Uh, first, I will remove all the drawings here. Uh, um, yeah, to our viewers, I was actually saying off air. I wish we could short the, the, uh, price, the price of the, of the actual devices, product. Yeah. <laughs> so we have a fairly significant support level here. 
around, what is this, call it $170, right? Mm. $169.13. So let's make it a range between $169 and $170, right? Mm. Um, so that's a fairly significant uh, support area. Mm -hmm. We have at the same time here two tops around the same area. So I'll, for the C ease of reference, I'll draw that. Oh. So I need to bring a mouse when I come do these. <laughs> over there and over there, right? So that is essentially uh, what looks like it could be a double top formation, right? Ah. So what we have as well, sure, my phone is going wild, uh, is another little bear flag situation unfolding over here. Mm -hmm. So that and that forms a little bear flag, mm. right? So what I'm sort of anticipating here is that we see this bear flag break lower. So now we know how bear flag works. You measure this move in here into the flag, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and then you forecast that as your target price out. Okay. Right? So that's your little flag ah. formation target over there at 156. Uh, so we'll draw that line in. So that's roughly our target for this little bear flag formation, right? So, uh, but then also if you combine that with the quite a significant level here, being this support level at 169, if that bear flag breaks and we get below 169, then this double top comes into play, Okay. right? And the double top is essentially measured as such. I'll show you now. It's not going to be the prettiest chart, but we sort of just measure this distance from the middle to the top. Bloop. Mm -hmm. Right? And we would then project that out. That takes us down to 140. So here we have a nice little short trade, essentially, with the first and second target mm -hmm. for those who are uh, brave enough to short Apple. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so um, I, mean I think there's a couple of things. We've yes. been saying this a lot. Yeah. I've been saying this a lot. Uh -huh. Broken record for a very long time. Tech stocks are overvalued. There's no way that some of these tech stocks are trading at valuations that are just wild. But they've right? been flying. They've been flying. They've and been. That the problem is, it's this, uh, the, the madness of crowds. Yeah. Right? Everybody's piling into them, so they keep going up. So everybody piles into them, so they keep going up. So everybody piles into them. It's like NVIDIA. Record after record. And it just keeps going and going and going and going. And it's like, it's, it cannot not be a bubble at this point, right? Mm. And I know that I will probably, if this thing doesn't work out, then people are going to look at me and think, ah, oh, you silly. <laughs> but at the end of the day, it just doesn't make a huge amount of sense to me. So I Nothing can run a, forever. We have a great trade set up here. If you want to take this trade with two targets down at 156 and 139, these are a long, long, long way down. Uh. Uh, you would probably put your stop loss, I'm going to draw another purple line, probably put your stop loss around here. Mm. So you could enter, say, 170, uh, anything above 170 as a short, the stop loss of $8, and you're looking at a relatively large uh, payoff if it works out. Yeah. Uh, let's go into uh, away from equities now, but into Bitcoin. Of course, there's been a lot of interest because of these uh, spot uh, ETFs mm. that have been approved. And now people are trading them and you're, having, you're getting all this institutional investor interest. Um, broke above, what, uh, 60000 $65,000? Yeah, it went all the way up to, what is this, 73000 oh, oh, even higher than the high that we saw in 2021. Yeah, so a couple of interesting th things happened. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change my chart layout, right? And mm -hmm. I guess this is part of our little educational segment too. Yes, like. yeah. So the first thing we do here is we change essentially um, the access on the chart to be a logarithmic access rather than a mm. traditional normal access. Mm. So I'll show you the difference, right? Mm -hmm. So if we do a regular access, that's what the chart looks like. Okay. Bitcoin. If we change this to a logarithmic chart, that's what the chart looks like. Mm. So just, I think we'll just mix up the order of things here okay. a little bit. To explain the difference, here the, the, the chart lines, the grid lines, are spaced according to percentage as where here, on a normal one, mm. there's space according to price. So this price right. this, the price from 10,000 to 20,000 is the same distance from 20,000 to 30,000, same distance from 20,000 to 40,000, uh -huh. right? Uh, here, however, the difference between 10,000 and 17,000 is the same as the difference between 17 and 25, is the same as the difference between 25 okay. and 40, because here it is based on percentages mm. rather than on absolute numbers. Okay. So it gives you a slightly more realistic sort of mm. expectation of what the price might do. Uh. So theoretically, we should actually be doing all our charts in this, but a lot of the time, 
uh, the price moves aren't big enough to really just for okay, the data yes. to be skewed. Otherwise, you have this chart that is really flat in the beginning and becomes exponential. You're right. Which is what Bitcoin does, is where this kind of normalizes it, right? So here, uh, back in 2017, this is seven, eight, nine hundred dollars a coin, as where this is like sixty-six thousand dollars a coin. Mm. If you looked at this in a traditional chart, you would hardly see any of these movements taking place here. Yeah. You would hardly see them on a regular chart. Right, so oh. it's a lot more helpful oh. to normalize it almost using a logarithmic chart. So anyway, yeah. So that's the sort of the key differences between okay. uh, a log mm -hmm. chart and a normal chart, mm -hmm. uh, and you know when you would use them. Mm -hmm. So essentially, what we want to do here is just kind of lean on history, right? Mm -hmm. So what we have here, and um, you know, we've I think spoken about this in the past already, is a bit of a four-year cycle in Bitcoin, right? So mm -hmm. we can see it sort of has this run up uh, into the end of the year, into the end of the fourth year of the cycle, comes down. Tests a longer term moving average, you know, bounces around a bit, has a nice run sort of into the end of the fourth year, and then the 80% correction is per usual. And now we have essentially the same thing here. So mm. we are uh, sort of in the fourth year of the cycle, so the expectation is for it to make a new high. It already mm. has. Uh, the expectation is for it to continue to make new highs. I mean, there's also still this uh, Bitcoin halving that's coming. Yeah, next exactly, time. and this is part. This is partly the driver behind why their expectation mm. is for the higher prices. Imagine like you're um, you're mining gold, yeah. right? Uh, and it costs you a hundred bucks to get an ounce of gold out, and suddenly you only get half an ounce of gold, and you still pay a hundred bucks. Yeah. So what happens? Your cost is the same. Your output is halved. Yes. So for you as a miner to make profit, you have to double your price, mm. right? Um, or for you to be in the same economic position. So this mm. is essentially wh how that scarcity issue becomes the driver behind yes. price because the production of the thing halves now every halved, four years. Yes. Exactly, but the input cost yeah. is the same. Okay. So there's that yeah. sort of rebalancing of, of uh, mm. what the people are willing to sell it for ah. that are producing it. Uh, the miners as such. It's very, <laughs> I don't want to go too much <laughs> further down this rabbit hole. <laughs> for now, I want to get to my trade idea here. So. Um, essentially, what we can do is we just lean on history, right? So here we have a 10, this is, uh, again, a logarithmic chart, and we have mm -hmm. um, a, what is this, a 200, uh, again, also, this is a weekly chart, not a daily chart, okay. right? Um, so we have a 200-week moving average. You can also use a 126-week moving average if you want. We can actually change that to 126-week. It kind of works a little bit better um, on the coin. So, uh, and we have a 10 and a 20 day, uh, well, 10 and 20 week in this case, simple moving average. So we can see in history, whenever we have these long sort of strong pushes, mm. price sometimes pulls back, not always, but sometimes pulls back into the area between 10 and 20, right? And we mm. can go back and look at previous runs as well. Like this, uh, this run in 2017, 2018 was a good example. So it runs up really strong, uh, comes off quite a bit. I mean, this is, if you were to measure this in percentage terms, right? That little move there doesn't look very significant. But that is thirty-five mm. percent. Uh, yeah. Right. That it comes down. Yes. So you know, to the, so the guy in the street, the world is ending, <laughs> right? <laughs> uh, however, um, you can see that the, when price comes between this ten and twenty moving average, it's, it tends to be a good buying opportunity up until the end of the year. Okay. So uh, to wrap this up very quickly, wait for price to come between this ten and twenty moving ah. average. By right, and then try and be out by the end of the year. Yeah, it's very, very interesting moves that we are seeing there um, with with Bitcoin. I mean, this is not something that a lot of analysts look at, uh, but it's it's quite uh, interesting to see like the kind of structural changes mm -hmm. uh, that are happening there. So thank you very much for that and just uh, showing us also the difference between those charts. Um, that was founder of Herenia Capital, Piedri Rilinges, with this week's uh, Trade of the Week.